Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. How are you doing today? Good. Good afternoon to very, you. Very good. Very good. So it's Crystal Beyer from Markham Public Library. I'm the library director. I'm here with our wonderful mayor. And today we are kicking off our very first oral history interview. So I'm so happy you are here and have time to talk with me today. So this can be shared with our great city and all of our residents. So without further ado, I'd like to begin with our very first question about sure. you and uh, your life in Markham. And it's, can I ask how long have you lived in Markham? Well, I came to Markham in 1961 from the west side of Chicago, so um, I was six months old. So um, I was born at Press St. Luke's uh, on the west side, which is Rush Presbyterian, mm -hmm. uh, Rush Hospital, Rush Hospital. Uh, and on the west side, mm -hmm. and uh, very quickly came out here with actually my grandparents instead of my mom. My mom. Uh, kind of went another direction and traveled out west and uh, left me with my grandparents and uh, worked all it worked out well that it uh, went that way but uh, for sure uh, yeah grandparents are here. wonderful they, they did a good job and mm -hmm. uh, my mom was back and forth with me when I was a kid and traveling about doing, doing what young people do oh right? sure sure uh, finding themselves so you've been you've been a resident for a long time you never moved away never moved away never moved stayed away. the whole time okay um if i may ask which schools did you attend growing up so um i went to elementary school at what they called then shirley forbes mm -hmm. which later changed to uh, a school name uh, they changed the school's name uh, to um, Barack Obama, no, no, I'm sorry, not Barack Obama, to Ralph Bunch. Mm -hmm. And then they changed it again mm -hmm. to Barack Obama. And then it got changed to Barack Obama. So um, the school that is there now is Barack Obama, but it was two schools prior mm -hmm. for elementary. And then I had a junior high school mm -hmm. um, that was called Robert Frost. I've driven by there. Yeah, it's still here. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went to high school at Thornwood High School. Okay. So those were the primarily the schools, and then latter years, mm -hmm. um, University of Illinois and local okay. or community college first. And sure. Thornton Community College, South Suburban College, okay. Prairie State, all the local colleges. So. Did you? Were you a poli sci major? Po no. No. No, okay, I gotcha. Uh, in town, did you attend a local church growing up? So, um, yeah, I did. I went to the local church, uh, Christ Temple mm -hmm. Church in town. It was actually down the street from my home. Mm -hmm. uh, so I attended there. Uh, and then, of course, you get older and you go to different churches. Sure. So, Ch churches are so interesting. They have such history and deep roots within the community. So it's always neat to see where people have have attended and what they liked best about going to church there. Right, and uh, that, that church is still here and mm -hmm. still vibrant in the community and still going. Yes. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. So when, when we see you on TV or just speaking within council meetings, you definitely seem like a people person, which leads me to ask, can you describe your personality when you're not necessarily talking in front of all these people? <laughs> Well, I, I think that um, I probably have been a kind of a people person. I think that yeah. is. That is your personality. I, I think that is my personality. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always kind of, uh, um, if, if I was able to get some quiet time, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I didn't, I, I don't mind mm -hmm. the, the, the people aspects, at least in the, in the servant part of it. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a certain sense of fulfillment personally about being able to uh, uh, provide help and service to people because I was always in the um, public safety mm -hmm. uh, era because or, or arena I should say yeah uh, because I was a fireman mm -hmm. so uh, that that was something that I always uh, enjoyed and then by being in the uh, uh, in the political realm of government mm -hmm. and uh, you have to there's two sides of government when you serve mm -hmm. uh, as a person you you have to divide yourself to be this political person in the community to 
uh, politically be elected, but then you have to have a government side where mm -hmm. you work with the people who work for the, the village or the city mm -hmm. that you may be part of. Yeah. And so uh, you have to have a maybe a split personality. You know, <laughs> You're and, very uh, compartmentalized. Yeah. Oh, but, very good. Uh, so yeah, so that that's some of my personality would be yeah people. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as I've gotten older, if I can get to a quiet time, I'll take it every once in a while. Absolutely, I love when I see you at community events. You walk around and say hello to everybody. You, you make time to talk with everyone and visit them and, and to let people get to know you. I think that's really wonderful. Uh, and you just, you definitely do compartmentalize yourself very well to, you know, be working with public officials and then in government and then the community. So it's really neat to see how you interact with people and how people know you. They know you and that's really neat to see. It's well, you know, that, that's true. Uh, and I think glad you said that. It's, it's so important. Yeah. Um, to get around, like you, 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 some of the events you've been at, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I try to, as they say in, in politics, mm -hmm. but it's not political, it, it's just part of the service mm -hmm. part of it. It can come off political, but yeah. um, it makes all it makes your life easy in government if you do get try and work the room and get to people mm -hmm. um, and, and let, them, let them feel who you are. Yes. Um, and it makes it easy for you to get your job done. Uh, to take care of them. Then they trust you. Mm -hmm. They'll have some belief or faith in you. Yes. Then and you're not a name on a piece of paper or on mm -hmm. a poster. You're you and yeah. you're relatable to them. And that's really, that's the key, right? To, yeah, it means something. Even yeah. though, you know, Markham is a small mm -hmm. um, community. It's not the city of Chicago. It's, you know, 11, 12,000 people. Mm -hmm. But those people want to know who their leader is of that community. Yeah. Um, to, to them, I, I am the mayor of the Chicago, mm -hmm. you know, so, right. you know, me, I may not think I'm much, but they do because they're, you know, you're leading them. So you have to, you, you know, you have to understand that. And uh, so my personality understands it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, so you're definitely a people person. Thinking back to either now or in your childhood, uh, may I ask what music you like, if it influenced you well, as a child? Well, um, I, I think when, when I was coming up, I probably, mm -hmm. um, like most young people, I just listened to the, whatever the, the, the local genre was. And mm -hmm. That was probably rhythm and blues or R&B or, or something, sure. they call it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so, or something to that effect. Of course, now I'm older. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I've gravitated towards more gospel and jazz. Oh, very good. Since I'm older now. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I've am I'm mellowed out since all those days. So I have to <laughs> have things that feed my spirit as well as my mm -hmm. calm my nerves, you know, and soothe my nerves, as they say. Was it your idea to have the, the jazz events that I've seen uh, posted in our promotional uh, materials from the city? Um, I, I supported it very strongly mm -hmm. um, because... Um, you know, music or jazz music, of, and certainly smooth jazz is what I would prefer right over just a traditional jazz genre. Sure. Um, smooth jazz is, is just, well, it's all instrumental. So mm -hmm. who can you really offend? Correct. You know, <laughs> you know that, that clarinet or that saxophone or that trombone offended me, mm -hmm. right? Because what did they say? Mm -hmm. they, they said nothing. Right. So music uh, in that respect, Mm -hmm. um, could be a, an application to anyone, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's, if it's, uh, as smooth jazz is in this era, I use that word earlier in the wrong place, but in, in this era mm -hmm. is, um, it, 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 it comes across that way. It mm -hmm. would be smooth enough for anybody to want to accept it and listen, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's some people who listen to gospel music and won't listen to anything else. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I know some that's people true. that way mm -hmm. through the years, but I've also known some that have loosened up to smooth jazz. So music uh, has always had a message. Mm -hmm. um, I know coming up, music had messages. Sure. Um, in different, uh, again, I use the word era, different mm -hmm. uh, times that we live in. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, 
you know, those messages, uh, sometimes you hear them, sometimes you, you are that music. <laughs> sure, and you're immersed yeah. in it. Yeah. M music can transport us to different places in our imagination, and that experience may differ from childhood into adulthood. And, you know, when you, when you look back in your early days, as when you were a kid, and you looked at the world around you, how have you seen the world change since you were a child, do you think? Well, I, you know, it's unfortunate, um, you know, to even, you know, so when, when, when you ask a question, somebody says, well, it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but you know where they're going. They're right. going to tell you. It's not going to be a good, good thing they're going to say since they're saying, oh, well, it's unfortunate. Well, 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 it is, but every um, era, er, again, era dispensation time that we traveled, mm -hmm. um, uh, they haven't totally gotten better mm -hmm. in terms of people. Mm -hmm. Now, our technology and the things that we've evolved to do has always gotten better, but we haven't gotten better with it. Mm -hmm. We're smarter. Maybe we just outsmarted ourselves about the things that should mean so much to us. Yes. They've wound up meaning less. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, so th there were times maybe in the 50s that all the people used to scream that, um, you know, going to um, the, like the dog and suds mm -hmm. in the 50s, mm -hmm. you know, that some of the parents used to scream about it. Mm. You know, um, some people maybe knew that or didn't know that. I'm not saying that I had direct contact, but I just know this mm -hmm. context mm -hmm. in which... Why did they scream about it? Because it pulled some kids away from the dinner table to oh, where yeah. people sat and had dinner together. Mm -hmm. And um, now to have dinner now with, without a telephone or a few telephones around the table, yeah. uh, if you have dinner at all, because everything's fast food. Right. Everything's in a hurry. Mm -hmm. You know, the world's gotten itself in a hurry. Yes. And so... That has an effect on people. So the world has changed uh, in, in regards to uh, what I say all the time uh, that I'm trying to always restore. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm trying to restore is a standard of living. That's and right. um, that's what a lot of communities, um, that's where they failed. Mm -hmm. This community over that time has failed. Mm -hmm. And because we, we let that, that standard get lowered by how we behave mm -hmm. and what we do, what we allow, what we compromise. Mm -hmm. And um, it affects our homes. It affects the way that we live. And so the only way that you restore that is, um, is to, you know, to start fulfilling that, refulfilling mm -hmm. what we had, what, you know, what we lost and what we once had. Yes. Start filling that. Absolutely. You know, I feel like this, uh, this question leads me to one of my last ones here, which is in the next 10 years, when you look at, when you look at Markham, I know you have a community survey out right now, so I'm really excited to see those, you know, answers be shared later. But when you look at Markham in the next 10 years, what, what is your hope for how it will, how Markham will change? Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm probably a realist, um, mm -hmm. about, um, I'm certain over the next 10 years that there'll be some things restored in terms of mm -hmm. uh, the quality of life and some of the things I mentioned in terms of the way we live and there'll be some standards. Mm -hmm. I think that there'll be some, uh, again, uh, some quality of life things are some of the services um, that the city provides will get good service. But I think that, that the people in Markham will be able to prosper mm -hmm. um, again uh, they'll they'll be the they'll have to be the stewards of that to maintain it as well and mm -hmm. keep it and appreciate it and yes. take good care of it mm -hmm. and so hopefully we can we can get the mindset of the Markhamites to realize that, that, that would that'll be, really be the wonderful. goal that will be the goal that would be Markham has uh, such wonderful families that have been here for a long time and I see just such deeply rooted community here. What strengths do you see in the Markham community? Either from a childhood, from your perspective as a child or as an adult? 
Well, you know, I think that the people who, uh, like myself, who stayed, I mm -hmm. think that, you know, um, I, I, I think that's probably what drives me to the, the knowledge uh, that I have about what we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I have a saying uh, that I'm, I'm not trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Um, I know what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so since I stayed, like other people in Markham that have, have stayed, mm -hmm. they have a hope that something can be restored and something can be like yesterday. Yeah. And so um, I think that, um, that that's some of the thought, is that um, mm -hmm. that's what people think, that, that there's hope for tomorrow. Yes. That that'll, something will be different for them in the future. Well, and we look forward to seeing that in our future. Thank you very, very much for giving me your time today, for giving us your time today and sharing your experience, your life here in the great city of Markham. And thank you for all your hard work that you do as our mayor. So thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you. And I'm glad for all of what you do for us as well. Thank you so, so thank much. You. Thank okay. you very much. And.